Well, hello, xenographers everywhere, and welcome to another episode. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at these two lenses. This one is a Jupiter 8, made in Russia. This one is a very special lens indeed. This is none other than the Leica F2 Samarit Summitar. This is the Leica Summitar F2. This lens comes to me courtesy of an extremely generous viewer, Pippi Sonzina. Pippi's seen the channel a few times. He knows I love old cameras. He knows I love old Leicas. And I received an email from him fairly recently uh, telling me that he'd got a lens that he wanted to send me that he thought I might be interested in. He did say it was something special. What I didn't realise is quite how special Pippi's gift would be. And when I opened the packaging, I was astonished to find a very, very nice condition Leica Summitar from around, I think, 1950. It's got its original Leica lens cap. It's got its original Leica rear cap. Even the caps are made beautifully on Leica lenses. Look at this beautiful piece of aluminium that's the rear lens cap. You can see it's got a tiny knurled edge milled into the back there. I don't think that's stamped, I think that's actually cut. The surface of the aluminium is beautifully finished and okay, it's only a lens cap, but it's a very nice lens cap. The engineering tolerances are incredible on this lens. I've used various collapsibles before of Russian origin and their engineering was pretty good but this one just blows them out of the water. It's an f2 to f16 lens and the aperture ring is just behind the front of the lens here. Turning the aperture ring is a joy. It turns so smoothly and beautifully. Absolutely astonishing. That's a damped mechanism. It's like turning the dials of some precision instrument, like a lathe or a micrometer or something. That's how nicely made it is. There's absolutely no play in the ring at all. Whereas if we go to the Jupiter, it moves nicely enough. But there are areas on the turn where the resistance increases and decreases. There's a little bit of play in the ring and it's quite thin. This is a fairly thin piece of stamped aluminium. It does the job certainly, but it just doesn't do it with the same tactile pleasure. There's a blue coating on the lens. I believe these were single coated. A lot of these lenses are in poor condition because that front element is made of quite soft glass. This one, I'm delighted to say, is unmarked. It's in absolutely beautiful condition. The glass seems perfect and it's almost like it's never been used. Focusing is by means of the tab here, as on all the Leica collapsibles. It has an infinity lock, so it's stored there at the infinity position while you're not using the lens. This was another surprising thing, even the finish of the infinity lock. It clicks into place like a machine tool. And once it's locked in place, there is no play. It's locked precisely into that position and it doesn't move. Focus ring itself is extremely smooth. It's so light, but it's also really well damped. There's no play whatsoever in the actual focusing helix that I can detect. It turns as smooth as the smoothest thing you can think of. Butter, cream, substitute your own smooth food stuff. Comparing that to the Jupiter, it is very smooth, I have to say. It doesn't have the quality feel of the lights, though. 
when you turn this focus ring or aperture ring, you're not physically moving the same amount of mass. So that does give it a different feel. Very, very high quality mechanism. This lens has clearly been kept in top-notch condition. I would imagine it's been serviced over the years, but who knows, it may just have been kept very carefully and uh, never had any need for servicing, but that focusing helix is one of the smoothest I've ever felt. It's a collapsible lens, so turn the barrel to unlock and then collapse the lens into its collapsed position. There's no play when it's extended. Tolerances are absolutely tight. It's quite heavy as well. If we compare it to the Jupiter 8, it's about twice the weight. The Jupiter is made of aluminium. It has an aluminium body, whereas the light's lens is clearly all steel. Engraving on this Leica lens, it's so precise. All the lines are dead straight. All the numbers are machined perfectly. You can't see any slight discrepancy in any of it. You run your fingers over it, you can hardly feel it. It's just beautifully made. The engraving on the Jupiter is a little thicker. It's less fine. It's not quite as precise. The machining on the lower barrel here is pretty nice. You can't really feel that when you run your fingers over it. On the aperture ring it's a different story. The engraving is definitely more coarse there. Closest focusing distance is three feet, which, to be honest, I would often like to get more close. But then with old lenses, as, as with all old machines, it's a case of using them within their limits. So once again, many, many thanks to Pippi for sending me this very beautiful lens. At long last, I can put on my lovely little Leica 2 body a lens that its manufacturer intended. Now don't worry, I'm not just going to sit here praising the Summitar, although it does certainly deserve some praise. It's a very beautifully made piece of engineering. No, instead we're going to do something useful as well. And what we're going to do is, because I've used these Jupiters so much, the Jupiter 8 lens from Russia, and because the Jupiter 8 is also an F2 50mm, we're going to do some comparisons between the two and see which lens is better in which area. It doesn't follow that because this lens costs a great deal more and is a great deal more nicely made than this lens, it doesn't follow that the images will necessarily be that different. The Jupiter is a very nice lens and if you've seen any of my other videos on this channel you'll know I'm quite a fan of it. I've used it quite extensively. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire up the Sony A7 and see what happens. So this first shot's from the Jupiter and you can see it's a nice enough image. It's sharp enough. It's somewhat on the cool side and there's a pleasant bouquet in the background. If we look at the lights version of the same shot, the differences are fairly self-evident. The Leica's warmer and it seems to emphasise browny, greeny sorts of colours. It seems sharper and there's a definite swirl going on in the background. The points of light in the background take on a sort of an ellipse or an oval shape and that makes the swirl. Whereas in the Jupiter they're more rounded. Which is the more pleasing? Well, that depends on your personal taste, I suppose. I think both are pretty nice. But I do prefer the lights because I like a little bit of swirl. In this shot, the Jupiter does a nice job of rendering the image. Again, it's sharp enough. Colour balance is nice. And the background blur is pleasant, if a little busy. Slightly different colour balance with the lights. The colours all seem a little bit richer and they're shifted slightly towards the warm. I think again the image is a little sharper 
and the background blur is what can I say while it's still busy it's somehow less unpleasantly busy than the Jupiter there's a bit of swirl going on and it just seems a little nicer on the eye the Jupiter produces a nice shot of the churchyard colours are nice there's no leaching of light from the sky into the darker areas and I think the trees in the far distance are slightly out of focus that could be my fault and maybe I didn't nail the focus properly the Leica image seems generally sharper and again we see that shift towards browns and greens I think in this shot it does produce a slightly more pleasing result here's the Jupiter's version of foliage and I think it does a pretty nice job colours are nice sharpness is good detail is good and the background blur I think is very nice indeed very soft very gentle very pleasing now I know this isn't an exact like for like shot but it does give you some indication of the difference first thing that springs to the eye is colour again we've got stronger richer greens it just somehow looks more photographic is that the right word it does have a quality that the Jupiter doesn't difficult to see the background blur clearly in this one but you can probably see that the points of light in the background are again more elliptical rather than circular the Jupiter version of this shot is again pretty nice everything's clear and sharp and there's no significant leakage of light from the bright sky into the darker areas the lights however does a much better job the black on the sign is much stronger and much deeper there's more contrast in this lens and again I think it does give a slightly more pleasing image not too much to report here both lenses give a nice rendering of this tree the Jupiter copes well with it as does the lights although characteristically for the lights the contrast is stronger in this shot from the Jupiter the red of these post boxes is very nicely rendered there's plenty of pop and it's a pretty nice image this shot was taken in fairly direct sunlight the same shot from the lights was shot on an overcast day and predictably the colours have less pop the image is definitely sharper though this shot's rendered very nicely by the Jupiter detail is good colours are good background blur is nice and soft and it does demonstrate the cool kind of images this lens produces the lights image is much warmer and again it is that little bit sharper background blur is slightly less busy than the Jupiter so on a brief very unscientific sort of test between these two lenses there isn't that much between them in terms of the image they produce the lights is definitely sharper it definitely has nicer background blur and it makes images that feel it's very hard to define it just has an X quality that makes images a little nicer I'd like to say they're a bit more photographic though I don't quite know what that means I'd like to say they're a little bit more filmy though I don't quite know what that means either but for my money they are certainly that little bit nicer now both these lenses are competent I've used Jupiter 8s for many many years on film and on digital and I love the images that they can make but the lights images are definitely nicer they're only a bit nicer but they are nicer in some indefinable way the Jupiter's a really good lens but to get better than a really good lens the increments of improvement are very small that's why the lights is only slightly nicer than the Jupiter but it is nicer and I do prefer it thanks once again to Pippi Sunzina for sending this lens it's a real treasure a little jewel of a thing I hope you've enjoyed this episode I hope you found it interesting please do join me next time for more xenography and thank you for watching